Normally, when we see our Lord working a miracle, curing those of the sick, or in other occasions, delivering demoniacs from evil spirits, the people around crush about, come crowding about. They all want to see more. They all want to see who this is who works such miracles, who teaches with such authority. Usually they come crowding here. What do they do? But they send him out. They ask him to leave. And we might wonder why that is. Such a contradiction here. Let's look a little bit though first at the exact actual deliverance here. This town where our Lord comes is actually in Galilee. And most of the people we have to keep in mind here are Jews. Our Lord himself is a Jew. Now he comes up to these two who are savage demoniacs. Nobody can even get near them. And the Lord delivers them. In this case, the demons actually speak to our Lord. Why do you come here? They appear to recognize who he is. Why do you, what do you have to do with us, son of God? Then, and here's the key point, they actually ask him, if you're going to deliver, if you're going to send us out, then put us in that herd of swine. And our Lord simply says, go then. And they go into the swine, the swine are all drowned. And that's where the problems begin. You see, first we have to understand that swine were considered unclean by the Jews. Any self-respecting Jew would not have anything to do with that. Here's a whole herd of them. Unfortunately, they had made a living off selling the swine. They were going against the Mosaic law. And so when the people see this and they see they're losing their, where they appear to be losing their whole, their way of life, their living as it were, they ask Jesus to leave. Would you please leave? Go. This was their livelihood, you see. They were making something that was contrary to the law of their livelihood. And that's what happens too easily, all too easily with all of us if we come across something that says, hey, hey I like this, it's, it feels good. I want to do this. We begin to fall into sin. We go what is contrary to the moral law, to the divine positive law. That is contrary to the will of God. That's what we do when we sin. And we drive our Lord out. Because we don't want to give up. We don't want to make the sacrifice it will take to follow Him. You see? When, in fact, what we should be doing is even looking for any possibility of making the sacrifices. How much more meritorious that is. Not only for ourselves, but how about all those we love too. We can actually offer our sacrifices, unite them with our Lord's sacrifice, and we work with Him together. We can become, as it were, co redeemers. We can help our Lord make up, as St. Paul says, for what is lacking in the sufferings of the church. That is, what we must suffer in our daily lives due to sin. So not only are we called upon to make sacrifices, we should even be looking for the opportunities. And they easily present themselves every day. It doesn't take much. But here we can offer this, you see, for the conversion of sinners. And that is what's going to turn us away from sin. That's what's going to bring about peace. That's what's going to bring about our union with God. So we are being asked to pray and to sacrifice every day. That's the key message of Adama. Pray and sac prayer and sacrifice every day. That we can, through the merits of Christ on the cross, 
not without it, but with him, in union with that sacrifice, off our own little sacrifices, and we too can gain merit for ourselves and for all souls. Ultimately, we can gain a union with God in paradise, the salvation of our souls. That is the ultimate goal. That's the ultimate reason we are here on this earth. Not for any temporary passing pleasures that make us feel good here and now, but to be united with God, to share His very life. And He's waiting to do that, share that with us. Are we willing to make the sacrifice necessary? Are we willing to turn away from sin and vice? Are we willing to pray every day to unite ourselves with Him? And then we'll see, already in this life, we're going to find that peace. We're going to find a great joy. And ultimately, forever in paradise. Praise be Jesus and Mary.